Okay, so a, a few some so-called final consideration. Fundamentally, for a system to change, what drives it would be at system level, system gives free energy, for each element or each component is by its own chemical potential, and or let's say we have initial Gibbs free energy curve versus composition like this. We have our so-called initial Gibbs free energy for the system for composition zero, okay? And for the initial state, if it's our initial state, if it sits here, we can do this. The left side determines the chemical potential for A element. The right side determines the chemical potential for B element, both within the initial phase, this P0, the initial single phase, let's say. And then the diffusion would start from there. And well, when would it stop? Or when would it cease to occur? A kind of, I wouldn't say cease to occur, but kind of a, doesn't change further. Put it out, it doesn't change further from composition point of view. It will occur from system when system is so-called in equilibrium. How do we determine equilibrium? You learn in thermodynamics, so-called common tangent. When it sits at the bottom by the common tangent, that determines the final state. This is final, so-called equilibrium. It's here. Okay. And when the system reaches equilibrium, what you would know is the chemical potential for each of the elements in every phase would be the same. So we start from here, chemical potential of A, we end up here, we would have piece one and piece two, or phase one, phase two, or region one, region two. In region one, the chemical potential for A is the same as the chemical potential of A in region two. Make sense? You see this guy, mu A is the left side extension for these two phases when they do the common tangent the chemical potential on the left side on A is the same on the right side is the same is this and the, the is chemical potential for A the same as chemical potential for B are these two the same typically no <laughs> typically no because chemical potential is always for different element but for piece A and piece two, uh, sorry, piece one and piece two, if we consider the same A element, they would share the same chemical potential. When the system reaches equilibrium, the chemical potential for each component would be the same throughout the system, so that it doesn't have a tendency to move preferentially anywhere. Okay? That's what we said. Mu 1A means chemical potential for A element in piece 1 is the same as chemical potential for A element in piece 2 or region 2 equals equilibrium. And the actual occurrence, we said, okay, uphill diffusion, downhill diffusion, which one is more common? Downhill diffusion is way more common. Going from high concentration to low concentration is way more common. Uphill diffusion is much rare, okay? And in terms of measurement, can we easily measure concentration or can we easily measure chemical potential? Of course, concentration. We can do that by uh, nowadays ICM, used to be ICP, okay? Or some other method. So quite often people talk about diffusion. We quite often based still by concentration quite often when we talk about it's easier to measure so it's easier to refer to so in practice the diffusion is often referred to or loosely speaking driven by concentration why because the downhill is far more common diffusion and that's why people say okay loosely speaking, driven by concentration gradient.